Okay, so let's follow on from the previous video where we used Audacity to make a one second noise stimulus. If you haven't seen that video, um, I encourage you to have a look at it if you're not sure how to make um, very short or very long sound stimuli. It's really quite straightforward um, because we're using, uh, we're using the Audacity or the WAV file that we've saved using Audacity as our sound stimulus to, to learn how to get sounds out from your hard drive or your, your USB stick or wherever it is that you've got them out into your sound output device. If you have your own WAV file that you've made or you've recorded or you've downloaded, hey, by all means, use that. You're not limited to having to use what we've made in the last video. Okay? But what I think you should probably do is keep your um, noise stimulus, so your WAV file, in the same folder as your current Python file that we're working at. We don't want to um, go into navigating through files and changing directories or using QtPy or TK to, to get any complicated, um, uh, mi uh, not migration structures, um, file navigation. We don't want to do that. So leave it in the same folder. Let's think about what we want to do. We have a WAV file. Can you see that? Yep, you have a WAV file. And in that WAV file, we've got samples. So what we need to do is we need to read or somehow get access to the samples in the WAV file and then port them to your sound output device or your sound card. For this um, set of videos, I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett USB DAC because I'm also using that to record. I think I'm going to pop that in. See, there's a the Scarlett um, condenser microphone. Sorry if I bumped and, and jostled that around. So you can basically, uh, you should be able to just drive it using your current um, your default sound card device. So we've got a WAV file. We need to somehow deal with the WAV file and the data in the WAV file. And we need to somehow create a mechanism to get the data from the WAV file and port it into your sound output device. So the way that we can deal with your WAV file is to use a standard um, module from Python called WAV. So this is a set of routines and functions to read and write WAV files. So just make sure that you've got this on your current Python distribu or your distribution, your work environment. The other thing that we're going to need is Pi Audio. So we're going to use Pi Audio to take that data from the WAV file and convert it into a, a format appropriate or stream it to your sound card. So WAV and Pi Audio. Make sure that you can import them without any problems. So I've written a list of uh, reminders here. Dear Andrew, step one. So step one, open the WAV file. Okay, so so let's start a file, uh, a variable. Let's call it soundstim, and we want to wave.open. It's as simple as this, wave.open. And what are we going to do? We have to pass it two arguments. The first argument is the name of the WAV file. So we called it, I'm looking up here, one second demo noise.wav. Make sure you put the extension there. Ah, and what we have to do here is we have to say, are we going to read the WAV file? Are we going to write to a WAV file? So RB is reading. We just want to read it. We used Audacity to write the WAV file before. So we'll just close that down and give us a bit more space. Can you still read that? Yes. I might just increase the font size a bit. Okay. Good. So. Let's assume just very quickly that you didn't make the WAV file and let's say your colleague next door is saying, hey, I've got this really cool sound stimulus here. I think you should use it in your experiment. So she gives you a file and what you want to do is go, okay, I want to just get in, in my head some idea of what this sound stimulus is. So we can actually get the number of samples in the WAV file, the sample frequency or the sample rate of the WAV file and then from that we can calculate things like duration. So let's get into the habit of just probing the, the um, sound stimulus, the WAV stimulus before and getting an idea of what it contains before we then send it to the stream object. So how do we do that? Well we can get the number of samples quite simply using sound stim. So we're using the same, this is the file that we created before. So this is the WAV file, sound stim dot get n frames. Now, my training as an auditory neurophysiologist means that I think of sounds and sound stimuli in terms of their samples and sample rate, sample frequency. However, Wave and I think Pi Audio calls them frames. So I might say the word samples, sample rate, but write the word frame or frame rate. Um, 
So I'm sorry if there is any confusion there, um, but I'm sure that you'll get over it. So number of samples. So get the number of frames or number of samples in that WAV file. And then what we can do is we can print that out. So number of samples. And you'll notice that I'm doing this the long way around, i.e. I'm declaring a variable, populating that variable, and then printing that variable out. And this should become apparent in the next couple of lines of code why we're doing it this way. So number of samples. The other thing that we can get is the sample rate. So sound stim. So this is the WAV file that we're currently working on, and this will be get frame rate. And we'll print that out. So sample rate plus string, and this will be sample rate. And then this has units of samples per second or frequency in Hertz. We typically run at thousands or tens of thousands of samples per second, or even hundreds of thousands of samples per second. Um, sample rate. So we've got the total number of samples and we've got the sample rate. We can now calculate the duration. So the duration is going to be the total number of samples divided by the sample rate. Whoop. Sample rate. And what we're going to do is we're going to round that to four decimal places because anything more than that's meaningless. Um, so this will give us about a hundred microsecond resolution, roughly. But you know, you can make that too. Uh, so let's print that out. Print ah, duration. So the duration is going to be in seconds because we've got samples divided by samples per second. The samples cancel out, gives us the seconds as the units. You can times that by a thousand to get it into milliseconds if you've got very short stimuli, doesn't matter at all. So let's see what we get out. So I've just saved that, let me just save that again. Okay, so we go Python sound demo. So we've opened up the WAV file and we've got 48,000 samples in this WAV file and it's been sampled at 48,000 samples per second. So if we divide those two out, it will give us the duration of one second. And this is exactly what we made using Audacity in the previous video. So if you're not using the same um, file as what we made previously, you're obviously going to get different numbers or you may get different numbers there. In the next video, we're going to quickly go through the same stuff as in this video, but we're going to use a mystery file just to see whether or not what we're doing here works. Should work. So that's step one done. Step two, we need to wake up PyAudio, get PyAudio up and running. So, um, yeah. Good. So p equals pi audio dot p y a u d o. Notice how the next one has capital letters there. Now, on all the on online documentation and the examples using their documentation online, um, they use the letter p. So we're going to keep it the same just to keep it standardized. So we've got that running. Now, so we've got access to the WAV file, we've read the WAV file in, and we've played around with it a little bit. We now need to create the stream object. So let's call it stream. So let's call it um, create stream. So we'll call it stream. Again, online they use um, p.open. Um, they use the word stream. So we're going to keep it the same just to make it nice and simple. So in doing this, we need to give it some information. We need to give it the format, the number of channels, the sample rate or the frame rate, and if it's an output for this stream. So the format, basically, I think this is number of bytes per sample or so the frame width. So this will be something like um, p.get frame width from, sorry, get format. I've got a previous example just written here from width. This is quite a hard one to get. And we're actually going to use our WAV file to define this. So this is going to be soundstim.getsamp width. Okay, good. The next thing we need to tell it is how many channels are we playing with here? So this will be soundstim.getnchannels. What do we mean by channels? Well, if you've got a left, you're using a stereo wave file, you know, uh, a left speaker is one channel and the right speaker is another channel. So you've got two channels. If you're recording from a microphone or like what we did in Audacity, we created a monophonic or a mono signal and that's just one channel. 
So you could hard code this yourself. If you know already, hey, I've got uh, just two channels or I've only got a single channel here, you just put the number two there and you, you live your life happily. What we're doing is we're getting in the habit of using our WAV file, our stimulus, to create the correct stream or the most appropriately correct stream. That's bad English, but anyway, um, for um, dealing with that WAV file. So it should reduce the number of errors that, we're, that kick up. So we've got the number of channels. Uh, we now need the rate. So this will be um, sound stim dot get frame rate. So this is what sample rate. But you'll notice, hang on, we've already got this up here before we even created the stream. So why are we writing this again? Let's just use the sample rate. It's the same thing as what we had before. So sample rate. And then what do we need to do is we need to tell it, is it an output? So that will be a uh, true. Great. So now we've created a stream object. There's no data passed to it yet. So we've got the WAV file. We've got the stream. Now we have to start getting the information from the WAV file into the stream. And the way that we're going to do it for this first video, there's a number of ways that we can do this. We're going to use a blocking routine where basically we're going to pass to the stream small chunks. They call them chunks or you might think of it sort of in terms of a buffer. So we'll read a certain number of samples and then pass it to the stream and then read another, the next number of samples and pass it to the stream and keep going until we reach the end of the wave file. So we need to read the data from the wave file. So we'll call it data. And so this is going to be sound stim dot read frames. Read frames. Let's have a look for read frames. Good. And we need to tell it how many samples do we want to read at a time. So we could do something like 512. So we're always reading in frames. That's actually really quite quick. So if you want to look at how many milliseconds of data that is, all you need to do is look at the frame rate. So let's have a look. So, so we've got 512 samples divided by our sample rate was 48,000. So if we go 48,000 and then times that by 1,000, that's going to be 10 milliseconds of data roughly. So every 10 milliseconds, we have to call in new data and play it out. So you're going to start to reach your hardware limitations. It's going to start to get distortions in there. Whereas if you do something like, I want to read 48,000, it's going to take a lot of time reading it in and then passing it out. So you're going to get a lot of latency or a lot of delay there between those two. So you have to try and find a good little mid-ground. Um, and back when I started um, a while ago doing these sorts of experiments, it was actually quite difficult to, to get the good balance between stream rates and buffer size and latencies and all that. What we'll do is we'll just send it, um, let's send it 1,024. So that should be what, I think about 20 milliseconds or something like that. So 1,024 to four divided by 48,000 equals, yeah, 21.3 milliseconds. Okay. So this is like the maximum number of frames that will be read by data because if we're at the end of the stream and we don't have a full 1024 samples yet because it's not a multiple, don't, it doesn't matter. It's going to pull in just whatever's left. So it's going to be the end, sorry, is the maximum number of frames per frame read, read frames. So we've got access to our first data point. So now what we need to do is while we have data, we need to then write that data to the stream. So stream.write data. Oops, data. So we've read that, those 1024 um, bytes, uh, sorry, not bytes, samples. We've then written it to the stream. What we have to do is we have to now update our position in the WAV file to get the next lot of data and then the next and then the next. So while we've got data in that uh, file. So data dot sound stim dot lowercase stim dot read uh, frames we'll read the same number of frames and so this is just going to go through and through and through and basically read the next lot of data once we've got no data it's going to break out of that while loop and then what we need to do is uh, stream dot stop stream 
and then stream.close. And then what we need to do right at the end is tidy up. So uh, p dot p dot terminate. Good. So this should work. Let's have a look what we've done. We've opened a WAV file, called it soundstim, we've opened a stream, we've started to give it the minimum parameter set for um, converting the data into the stream object, or converting or getting the data into the sound card. And then we're starting to read the data. We're then playing or writing that data to the stream around and round and round and round and round and round until it doesn't have any more data. And then we're going to close the stream and then terminate the object, uh, the P object. So let us see what we get. So we've read it. Strem not defined. Ah, okay, so that's my gravy filled fingers again. So here we go. We, it ran before and it closed uh, throughout this error, but it should not throw any errors now. So this is uh, the headphones, just some Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. You should be able to hear that quite clearly. We'll do it again. And again. Great. So we have now just played our sound stimulus through the sound output device using a blocking we'll go through what blocking means in the next couple of videos, a blocking um, call to um, stream.write. Now, what can we get some idea of whereabouts in the sound stimulus we are? So we can write something like uh, current position uh, yep plus String sound stim dot tell. And so what this should do is tell us whereabouts in that sound file, what sample number we're currently at. So as you can see, so tell, we've called it before we've read any data. So if we go print, okay, we'll just cut and, cut and paste that and have a look after where we are, after we've made that first data point, you see, once we've read that data, our current position is no longer at zero, it's now at 1024. And remember, that's the number of samples that we pulled in. So you can see we're slowly tracking along the um, wave file. So if we go here and we do something like stream.write data, and then we read some more data, and then we print out our current position, we should see in our command out, command prompt, it's going through that WAV file, okay? And then you see right at the end, we've got no more data, and then it, it will break out. And then we'll stop that stream. So here, you can also update or get an idea of whereabouts in that stimulus you are. So we'll leave this video here. We've done a lot, and um, this is the basic process that we're going to go through using Pi Audio. In the next video, we're going to quickly do the same thing, but I've got a mystery file, one that has a, maybe a different frame rate of, or a sample rate, different duration perhaps, and may have a different sound. So when we hear it, it might not sound like white noise, or it might, we don't know yet. So um, have a shot, best of luck. Um, there's a lot of documentation on Wave in the Python documentation. So you can go through and, and see what sort of information you can get out of there. So we'll leave this here and I'll see you in the next video.